um, as we all know, the Gaming Act was originally intended to provide the residents of Pennsylvania with property tax relief through the use of slot machines as a source of, of new revenue. And at the time, um, it was estimated that $1 billion in annual revenue would be generated, and we know that that was a promise that was never kept. That figure was never realized. So I have a piece of legislation, Senate Bill 269, that would amend the gaming code to require any additional revenue to be used any additional gaming revenue be used for property tax relief. And it will specifically add language to Title IV directing all new revenue generated from the expansion of gaming into that property tax relief fund. So when the Commonwealth authorized the expansion of gaming to include table games, contrary to that original promise that was made with slot revenue, um, there was no additional property tax relief for Pennsylvanians. So, as the state continues to have the debate on gaming expansion, um, I would like to see us keep the promise and ensure that revenue is used to provide property tax relief. So I would be curious as to what the opinion of the board is on that legislation and if you have any ideas or insights on how to make this a, a good final product to better help the citizens of this commonwealth. Uh, a senator, um, first and foremost, um, property tax relief funds are generated through the revenue obtained through slot machine gaming. And in 2000, the calendar year 2018, slot machine revenue was the highest in, in five years. Um, total revenue in the Commonwealth exceeded any other previous year. But the point is that slot machine revenue at the 12 operating casinos is, is more than holding its own against competition from surrounding jurisdictions. And, and secondly, um, your comments were, were, were very well taken regarding uh, Act 42. Um, one of the expansion of gambling is interactive gaming. And we hope to get that up and running at the tail end of this fiscal year, and it'll be available for all of fiscal year 1920. Interactive gaming, in order to ensure that it would not negatively affect slot revenue, imposed a similar tax rate to interactive gaming that is projected in a slot-like game. And that tax rate is 52%. So the one thing that benefits the property tax relief fund is 65% of that 52% is going to the property tax relief fund. So there is a component of expanded gambling that will directly benefit property tax relief. And I think that's good news for homeowners here in the Commonwealth. Um, I appreciate that. And, and any further insight that you may have, I would welcome uh, those thoughts moving forward. Um, so, uh, as we know, Act 42 of 2017 allowed for the creation of the 10 mini casinos by establishing that new Category 4 slot machine license. Um, I believe five licenses have been awarded to date. One of them uh, is in New York County, not in my district, but very close by. It's in Springettsbury Township. And so um, I have heard from constituents with concerns with regard to the Pennsylvania State Police's involvement with casino security. And, um, you know, with, with this mini casino opening, it was the first um, license that was awarded. Um, we expect it to be opening. If you have any further insight on when it would be opening, I'm sure we would appreciate that. Um, can you talk about security at that Category 4 casino? in York County. Sure. There, there are two different components there. One, security at the casino itself is a function of the, the operator's obligation. You'll see their security staff uh, and their surveillance staff that are employees of the casino. The state police, uh, per, per the Gaming Act, have law, law enforcement responsibilities for any crimes committed on the gaming floor or in the parking lot adjacent to the uh, casino. So the category fours, we'd certainly expect that the uh, casino will have an adequate security force, will have uh, surveillance in place, 
and that the, those facilities will have the uh, the communication set up. We'll make sure we review, make sure that they 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 have the uh, lines of communication and the relationships with the state police to uh, respond when there when and if there is an incident. So my understanding is there are 120 uh, state troopers that are assigned to the Category One casinos throughout the state. Category four casinos will will not have that type of uh, Pennsylvania State Police presence. Is that the, correct? The the act uh, provides that the Gaming Control Board cannot require the state police to have a presence in in a Category four casino. Currently, the state police, because they do have law enforcement responsibilities in the one twos and threes, have elected to place troopers in those casinos. Uh, the category fours being much smaller than uh, what, what the traditional one or two or even the, the category three will not have a, a, it's not contemplated that they will have an on-site presence, but yet they will have responsibility for responding to incidents that occur in the casino. And they work those arrangements out because in York it would be the Springettsbury uh, Township Police Department. So the Pennsylvania State Police would coordinate with some sort of memorandum of understanding between the local uh, police department and themselves to provide that uh, police coverage. Certainly there will be a collaborative effort between those law enforcement authorities and the casino and we'll review those plans to make sure that uh, there, there's adequate response for any type of incident. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to follow up on a question uh, that Senator Laughlin asked, and that you answered very well, which was what type of safeguards do we have in place to uh, assure that uh, people with gambling addictions um, don't find themselves in a predicament. Um, but I'm hoping that you could expand that answer and talk to me about our children, right? So um, we do not want our children getting online and gambling. Um, and, and we've all heard those stories about how um, kids get into mom and dad's accounts and, and do different things like ordering all kinds of wonderful things off Amazon.com, et cetera. So could you talk to us a little bit about um, what safeguards have been put in place to assure that our children are not gambling online? Certainly. Um, only adults can establish an account, first and foremost. And there are um, identification verification techniques that are used at that initial sign-up period of time that provide uh, an extremely high level of confidence that it is in fact an adult that, uh, that is registering for an account. And the adult has to establish um, uh, key, key questions that, that to answer in case there's anything down the road where it looks like somebody may be accessing the account who's not authorized, it, it can flip into a, 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 a question and answer um, thing, you know, um, you know, what was the name of your first pet or something like that, as you see in other contexts where, 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 that, um, where that comes up. Um, certainly the most challenging aspect is if, if, is if a parent allows knowingly uh, uh, an underage person uh, to play on their internet, um, on their internet account. If, if, if we were to find that out from any source, um, there would be a significant consequence. That account would be, would be closed. Uh, the person who had established that account would be placed on an exclusion list and would be barred from establishing any um, interactive gaming account in the future in, in Pennsylvania. Well, that's reassuring to know. Um, following up along the same line, um, we have had several um, cybersecurity issues here in our own state government. Um, several, several to mention where, um, you know, they've gotten into our teacher information management system. They shut down the Bureau of Vital Statistics where we get our birth certificates from. Um, with the addition of iGaming to your portfolio, um, what steps have you put in place to ensure the safety of our constituents' information, um, you know, who, who utilize these programs? So you're going to have, 
you know, based on the information that you share with me about how we assure that we don't have minors gambling, you have a tremendous amount of personally identifiable information um, with regard to many different aspects of their lives. Um, you know, speaking broadly, obviously you don't want to give me specifics, right? Because there are probably nefarious people who are listening and would love to have that information. But um, what type of assurance can you give us that our constituents who choose to use iGaming will be safe? Well, we have had a, a, an information technology department since, since we were established. Uh, we upgraded that department uh, several years ago. We have extremely talented director uh, in that department who, who is very cognizant of um, proactive steps that can be taken to ensure that information that we have in our possession is, is maintained appropriately and that there are uh, those protections in place. Um, but over and above that, we, we recognize that problem as, as I'm sure you have as, as well. And one of our uh, new hires um, is a director of cybersecurity. And that person has been identified and, and uh, is expected to come on board within the next uh, month to, to six weeks. And, and we will be uh, charging that individual with uh, working with our director of IT on a, on a close basis to ensure that what, what, what we have in-house is adequately protected, but also to go out and collaborate with our casino operators and, and to, uh, to assist in investigating any cyber breach at a casino um, but also to look at their systems to make sure that we're satisfied that the casinos are protecting their own systems. I appreciate that very much. One of the things that we found working with Senator Ament and Representatives Grove and Ortitai in the House is that um, government doesn't always necessarily meet or exceed industry standards. So I would say to you, please, um, you know, at bare minimum meet, but would really like to have you exceed those industry standards with regard to keeping that information safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.